Hi everyone. I am Mayank Joshipura and I am back with my views on how certain situations or certain regulations can actually benefit probably one of the most vulnerable or underprivileged section of investors. Oftentimes we feel that small investors or retail investors are at significant disadvantage compared to their counterparts, be it large institutional investors, both domestic as well as global, and some of the ultra high net worth individuals. And when it comes to making investments, we feel that the small retail investors are deprived of very sophisticated analysis or some privy information or certain tools and products that otherwise are available to those affluent rich investors, be it institutional or individual. That said, there are several things where only retail or small investors are at advantage and not otherwise. And regulators and tax authorities have in several instances done certain things to ensure that certain benefits are available only to those small investors and not to everyone else. And that's what kind of allow us to benefit being a small investors compared to some of the large investors. And that is what we are likely to or going to discuss today. So let me just uh, start by discussing one such change which took place in July of 2019 where the taxation related to buyback offers made by listed companies was kind of changed. So what was the old regime? In 2013, under section 115QA of Income Tax Act, it was kind of mandated that unlisted companies when they go for their buybacks, they'll have to pay 20% of tax. Now that was not applicable to listed companies. And therefore there were series of buyback offers made by several listed companies because if they had paid dividend in those days, they had to pay that dividend distribution tax, which was 20% plus. And if you go for buyback, you don't have to pay that tax. Now the tax liability on that buyback, proceeds was there on investors. So if I have kind of given my money to a listed entity who has announced buyback through tender offer, and if I have given my shares, depending on whether I have been holding it for long term or short term, that is for period of more than one year or less than one year, I'll have to pay tax accordingly. There was nothing that was to be paid by company. Now what happened in July of 2019 that those sections which were applicable only to unlisted companies were now made applicable to listed companies. So if a listed entity like say TCS or Wipro or NTPC, if they come up with buyback, they like any other unlisted companies will have to pay tax at their end which is 20% plus surcharge plus says, and if you add up everything, it comes to 23.3%. That said, the buyback proceeds now in the hands of investors are completely tax free or tax exempt. Now with this change, and at the same time, this dividend distribution tax was taken off and this, this tax liability on dividends were shifted to investors depending on the marginal tax bracket that you are, whatever income that you receive in form of dividend, the company doesn't have to pay any or deduct any tax, what they call as DDT, a dividend distribution tax that has been removed. And whatever dividends that you receive, you'll have to pay tax based on the slab that you are in. If you are in 10%, you pay 10%. If you are in 30% bracket, you pay 30%. Now with that, since companies don't have to pay any dividend distribution tax. And if you go for buyback, you in fact have to pay 23.3% of the tax. We thought that this kind of change would lead to kind of complete disappearance of buybacks and companies may not come out and uh, you know 
make any buyback offers from that point onwards that said it has not turned out to be true recently we have seen series of buyback offers including firms like ntpc tcs wipro they've all come up with their buyback offers and when it comes to buyback as i mentioned there are certain regulations certain provisions that sort of help retail investors only be it some reservation in case of ipo allotment or when it comes to buyback the total size of buyback whatever it is 15% of it has to be reserved for retail investors and normally as we know retail investors in many forms are much smaller number retail investors which means anyone holding less than 2 lakh rupees of shares as on let's say record date uh, of that buyback announced and since the numbers are less or claimants are less and the 15% is the reservation the acceptance ratio is far better let me just give you an example so tcs which is an ongoing buyback offer at this point of time which sort of will close on 1st of jan right and the record date for that was 28th of november market price was about 2700 or so and that buyback was offered at 3000 rupees now think about it. if you are a retail investor which means owning shares worth less than 2 lakh rupees let's say you own 50 shares of about 2700 rupees or so your entitlement is close to 40% so if you are owning 50 shares you may end up getting uh, the entitlement where the company end up buying it from you at least 20 shares but if you own 75 of them which means the amount that you are owning is more than 2 lakh rupees there you get zil zero nothing you have no entitlement because the large number of investors there that includes all types of investors the large institutions the the kind of this mutual funds promoters everyone is kind of clubbed into that the large hni investors and therefore there is a great advantage out there right that you have better entitlement entitlement now normally what happens is while well, the entitlement may be 40% but there are several investors maybe due to inertia or maybe due to several other reasons they probably may not end up tendering their shares in such offer even if the market price may be lower than the buyback price they may still not offer and that leads to a higher acceptance than your original entitlement so chances are there for example in this ongoing tcs buyback offer Well, the entitlement for a retail category of investor is just about forty percent. You may end up getting fifty percent of your shares accepted. Now, this is benefit number one that your entitlement or acceptance in buyback is going to be much higher. And to that extent, these buybacks are much more attractive to you. Now, there is another advantage as well with this change in tax, right? And I'll come back to that. But if you see, as on today, that is on December thirty, twenty twenty. when i last looked at this before kind of uh, starting with this video so at 12:55 pm the market price of tcs share was 2910 the buyback price is 3000 and the final date of tendering shares of course it's first and then but if you are kind of sending it through your broker they'll insist that you send it by 3 december 31st so they can kind of send it to company by 3rd right and the expected date of credit of funds of those accepted shares or return of remaining shares uh, which were not accepted let's say you tendered all of them and you may end up getting 50% of them accepted so for which you get 3000 rupees into those number of shares amount credited to your account whereas the remaining kind of shares that will be returned back to your dmat account and that's going to happen on jan uh, 12 2021 not 2020 is sort of i am still in 2020 but it's 2021 right now how retail or dumb money can actually benefit out of it it's not that the others may not get but as i told you the entitlement is practically a very low i mean is it is the 75 shares as zero entitlement so you don't get sort of anything which company is going to accept from you so let's call this gentleman mr dumb and mr dumb bought rupees 1 lakh worth tcs shares at rupees 2000 in let's say april of 2020 so that is what he did 
and let's say he kind of decided to tender all his 50 shares in this buyback offer let's say tomorrow or today right at rupees 3000 and of course let's say half a percent is the uh, brokerage rate for this buyback right then you net off uh, brokerage you get let's say 2985 right and you know that well 40 percent is entitlement and you can be conservative but you know that you know there will be at least 50 percent of them will be accepted and you may want to maintain your holding you don't want to kind of lose out on anything what if tcs shares run away from now to let's say 12th of jan so you don't want to miss out on those, that opportunity you want to retain that 50 intact right so you end up buying 25 shares if you feel that well acceptance ratio could be higher and you don't mind owning a little more of tcs shares you can buy 27 as well but you buy 25 shares at 2910 from market today and if you're operating through some discount brokerage houses like upstock or zero da except for stt you don't end up paying any tax so it's like 0.1 percent is your cost of executing this right uh, buying again from market now in previous regime, which was prevailing before July of 2019, what would have happened in this case? Well, it looks like a great buyback offer. If I had executed this strategy to an extent, I was at a disadvantage. Why? Because let's say if I have no other short term capital loss to show and the shares which I bought at rupees 2000 in let's say April of 2020, I'm selling now at rupees 3000. So there is a gain of rupees thousand per share. And I have to pay 150 rupees of this thousand rupees in form of short term capital gains tax. I'm not adding surcharge or anything. I'm keeping it quite simple at the moment. But out of this thousand, 150 will go away. So post tax, I'll get only about 850 rupees profit. And then I have bought shares from the market at 2910. Of course, my cost price has gone up. So subsequently, when I sell, my profit is going to be lower. Basically, I'm not getting what kind of I was entitled to. I end up paying this tax of 150 rupees on my 1000 rupees profit. If it was long term, I also I would have paid if kind of my total profit during the year is, let's say, more than 1 lakh rupees. I would have still paid that 11 point some percent of tax, right? 8, 8 percent or so, 11.8, right? Including that 10 percent of long term capital gains tax plus surcharge plus SES, etc., etc. Now, look at what has happened due to this new buyback tax regime, whether it's section 115 QA plus plus plus, were kind of applied to listed entities also while well, going for buyback. Now that may discourage companies to go for buyback. But since we see that there are a lot of buybacks on offer even now, that actually makes a big sort of or it's a big benefit for retail investors or any investor, but more so retail because the entitlement is better for you as a retail investor, it's not so for any other category of investors. So if you see this, in new regime, the entire buyback proceeds will be tax exempt in the hands of investors. So now your thousand rupees gain is thousand rupees gain. So you actually bought something at 2000, sold at 3000, you had gone into the market and sold it today, you would have paid tax. If you have tendered it to buyback and that whatever 50% is accepted, you don't pay any tax. On the top of it, you get cool two plus percent of profit in this 15 days. Why? You see, you are not doing anything. You know, out of 50 shares, 25 TCS itself is going to buy it back from you at 3000 rupees. Net of tax 2985, let's say, right? And you know that this 15 shares you are forward selling by tendering it tomorrow or even today, right? You don't want to miss out on that total holding on TCS. You want to maintain its constant. So you bought it from 2910. So what you have done is you are buying those same shares which you are selling it to TCS in buyback from the market at 2910. So 2985 minus 2910, right? That's a clear difference of close to two and a half percent that you get in 15 days. 15 days that you get. Your shares will remain intact. You actually in between book profit, right? And there's no tax to be paid on that large sum of profit. And Two and a half percent in 15 days, which is not bad, right? And you may say, well, 
on 100,000 rupees or 1 lakh rupees, all this comes to what? Even if you add up tax benefit plus this 2.5% on that, you know, difference in terms of returns and all, it comes to a few thousand rupees only. But that's not the point. The point here is that if you are really a small investor and you are kind of invested in companies that are often going for such buyback announcements, Bait Infosys, Wipro, TCS, there are several kind of public sector companies, not that all of them you need to own. Now there are people who may actually on the announcement of buyback initiate a position below that 200,000 to kind of execute that strategy and banking or relying upon what will be the entitlement, etc. I'm not talking about that active or risky strategy, right? Where you don't know what will be the price post buyback. I am right now talking about someone who is already owning those shares. And by just participating in this superior entitlement kind of provisions that we have and a favorable tax regime now from an investor's perspective, since the entire gain on account of buyback or entire sales proceeds is tax exempt in the hands of investors. This is something which is really interesting. And not only this, there are several such provisions, right? Right from buyback to IPOs to there are several other kind of instances where retail investors, which otherwise as in the beginning mentioned, that generally at disadvantage on several other fronts. Here we have clear advantage. So if you are an investor falling in this bracket, still kind of have a day if you are owning TCS shares and if you want to implement this strategy. Wipro's buyback offer has just opened yesterday, that is 29th. So we are owning Wipro shares. And now that you know your entitlement, Let's say, let's say if you own 60, you will have 28 of entitlements or roughly about, you know, 48, 49%. You can add at least 10% to that because your acceptance will be invariably going to be higher than your entitlement, right? Slightly higher. And then you just kind of execute the same strategy there as well. You can wait till last one or two days because, you know, there's no need to block money early like TCS has you know, the last day, day after tomorrow. So, you know, there you can kind of execute it. The same thing you can do for something like Wipro or any other buyback offers that come going forward. And I'm not absolutely saying at the moment, as I repeat, that you kind of proactively pursue this strategy that, you know, the company announces buyback because at that point of time, there is no clarity on what is going to be our entitlement. If all small investors advised by their brokers and all are not solve small investors, suddenly turn small investors because 200,000. I know that I'll have better entitlement. So I'll buy something just below 200,000. There are too many kind of smart people to try to execute this strategy. Chances are there that you will have terrible entitlement for even retail category because there are people who are not otherwise retail have suddenly turned retail. And therefore it's not a great idea to sort of plan for it, right? Because in that case, you may end up having large number of shares which you otherwise probably didn't want for a particular company and price post buyback may fall substantially, right? So always go and buy company on its merit, not just because of the buyback gains, but when it comes to this kind of opportunities, you can maintain your long-term holdings, can in between make profit out of it, may not end up paying tax under these new provisions, and also can gain this two, 3% differential. In many cases, it could be more and the market conditions are great right now. The difference is only about two, three percent. If it was not as good, you may have five, six, seven percent difference. So you can lock in this kind of gains. And that's what you should try to exploit rather than playing too smart. So keep it simple. And you will have a lot of opportunities on your way to make small, small money without taking any risk for that matter. So thank you, everyone. I'll see you later, guys.